Hi, my name is Joseph Ally. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about Neville Goddard's I Remember When technique. I've talked almost about everything that Neville Goddard has to offer, but nevertheless, at least as far as techniques are concerned, but nevertheless, this is one that I've never touched upon. It's a very interesting, very simple, but very powerful technique, as you will learn. And so I want to go into how it works, why it works, and then how to utilize it to get your desires and then a story to go with it. Before we begin, there's a worksheet in the description. Download that. It's going to help you with this. Also, hit the like button. It does something to the algorithm so that people who would not normally be able to see this will be shown this video. Also, hit the subscribe button and bell icon if you want exacting methods on how to manifest every or any single thing that you want and how to completely change your life through manifesting in an exact, precise way. So let's jump into it then. I remember when. Now, Neville Goddard refers to this in a few of his lectures and the concept goes as follows. The way that he tells it in a story is that he had a vision or a dream in which he received information of how to use a, a very specific technique. In this dream, dream, he appeared at an empty lot and there was a grandfather and there was the father, I believe they were both there, not his grandfather and father, but someone else. And he was invisible to them, but the man was standing in an empty lot and he then said to the person that he was with, I remember when this was an empty lot. And then from then he started describing the house or the building in exact detail that he wished were there. But he said it in the tense as if it was already there. So that, in, in, as, I guess in the form of an example, is what the I remember when technique is. Now, if we were to summarize or convert this into just an instruction on how to perform this um, technique, the idea goes as follows. We are to basically summarize some event in the past or kind of describe something in the past as if it is in the past. And then while having done that, or after having done that, describe the current reality, the one that you wish was true. So an example of this, if you wanted, for instance, to have, I don't know, a million dollars, but say you're pretty broke right now, you don't have a lot of money, or say you have no money whatsoever, if you wanted to implement this technique to manifest money, what you could do, one example of this would, would, to be, would be to say, I remember when I was broke. I remember when I had no money. And then, then say, but now I have whatever amount of money. I have, have $10,000. I have $100,000. Or, but now look at this uh, Lamborghini that I have, or look at this big mansion that I have. So you would say, I remember when I was broke. And then specify what you have now. Now, why does this work? And how does this work? And why is this beneficial and a special technique? Most of the times when we manifest, we always want to stick with the positive tense, which means leaving out the negative in all forms and only talking about the positive. The reason we do this is because the subconscious mind is non-selective. And if what you impress upon it doesn't have proper context or it's not specific enough, then you can actually impress the thing that you don't want to impress for and i'll give you an example for instance if you were poor one of the things we really want to avoid is saying something like i'm no longer poor now in scripture there's a verse in job that really drives this home and he says let the weak man say i am strong now the reason he says that is and the quote from inception that is really helpful for this is if i told you right now don't think about a pink elephant. What are you thinking about? Instantly, a pink elephant. So if we fixate or if we exclaim 
that we are not a certain way, then oftentimes what will happen is we will impress the subconscious mind with the negative. We will actually imagine that negative thing. Now, a lot of people don't talk about this. A lot of people don't really understand how the subconscious mind works, but suffice it to say and test this yourself, try imagining if you're not already in the positive tense. So instead of saying, I am no longer poor, you would say, I am rich. So that's the premise as why this technique is important because we're actually referring to a time in our reality where we did not have the thing that we wanted. So if you were stuck trying to figure out how do I manifest this removal of this thing, this is the perfect technique for you. But not only that, you can utilize this for anything. So when I'm talking about I remember when I used to be poor, but now I have 17 businesses and 47 Lamborghinis, but I'm describing them thoroughly. It's important to try to utilize all the different imaginal facets so that we can get a full and complete picture and context of what we're talking about here. So, and it just drives home that point, we, if we just are saying something in the negative tense, it's probably going to impress with just the verbiage of that. So if we're saying, like I, like I just said, the weak man say, if he just said, I'm not weak, we don't want to do that. So we want to specify in the negative tense, the thing that we no longer have, but we say it in a way that clearly explains, I remember when, which means it's no longer there. So that's, an that's a very crucial aspect to this whole thing. So why is it and how is this effective and how does this work? So there are different, I guess you, as I call them, facets of the imagination. Now, oftentimes there's a misconception that it's emotion that drives manifestation and only emotion. But once you begin to test just writing words and just using visualization and just inner monologue, just inner whatever, that's not emotion, you'll pretty much almost instantly be able to throw that out the window. So what this does here is it uses a combination of your visualization faculties, so to speak, or and also your your um, inner words, your your inner speech. So combining faculties increases accuracy of the imaginal act. I'm going to say that again. Combining your imaginal faculties increases the accuracy of your imaginal act. So therefore increases the accuracy of the manifestation. Someone yesterday in the workshop, I was talking to them and they said that they had imagined someone holding a balloon, a red balloon, and then letting it go. Now, and they were just doing a test. And I've done this, not that exact test, but I've done very similar tests as well. When she got the results, this is what happened. She didn't actually see someone in real life holding a balloon and letting it go. She walked into an office, looked, and there was a sticker there with someone letting go of a balloon, which is really interesting. And it, had, um, it was found out that that sticker had just been added before which is really interesting, just before she had walked in there, which is very interesting. Um, but nevertheless, it wasn't what she wanted. Why? Because when she visualized this, this thing, she probably only utilized her visualization faculty, meaning no sensation, no hearing the balloon, um, no emotion related to it, nothing else in the setting, no hearing the child say any words. Now, this isn't always necessary. We don't always need to do this, but ambiguity is a huge problem in manifestation. I don't know how many times I've imagined things and then the manifestation was just on a movie that I saw. And really, it's only just because I didn't emulate the imaginal act as I ought to emulate the imaginal act. The whole of manifesting is as simple as this. We go into the place that we wish we were and we have to act as if we were really there while we're imagining, not after we're imagining. So in other words, if I wanted to um, become rich, then I would imagine a scene where I would be rich, but I want to think what I would think 
if I were rich. I would want to feel what I would feel if I were rich. I would want to say what I would say if I were rich. I would want to be able to see whatever I would see. All of the senses you want to remove. This is why we talk about kind of suspending the senses because then we go into that imaginal act in its fullness so that we can experience it as if we were really there. And this technique really helps with that because we are then seeing what we want to see and then also describing, I used to be this, but now I am this. And it's so it's extremely powerful. Your words are extremely accurate and then what you're seeing gives gives way to other sensory vividness, other levels of accuracy. I know someone specifically who um, got to meet, finally manifest something that they wanted, which was to basically go to their specific person's house, be invited there. And she used this technique, but she used it in a slightly different way. It still fits within the confines of the technique itself. But she said, I remember when I went to, or I was invited to his house for the first time. So what that means is it's it's still within the confines of it. But she's not talking about the negative of what didn't happen. She's referencing it as if I remember that first time I went to the house because there were going to be many other times after that, which you can also do. And then it wasn't long after that some chain of events happened and she ended up finally going to her specific person's apartment. So you can use this with anything. You can use this with money. You can use this with romance. Use it with health. Use it with, yeah, if you're ill, that's an, it's a very good one to use if you have uh, some type of sickness. I remember when I was sick and now I'm great. And you could add other people in there to verify it for you. Have them looking at you or talking to you as if you are well or as if you are rich. Very powerful, very simple. Utilize it, whatever you want. Just think to the state you're at now, which is very easy, and then think of where you want to be. Now bring yourself there and then say to someone or say to yourself, I remember when I didn't have this and now I have this and name it specifically. Naming is also very powerful. And then when you say, I remember when, we're actually calling upon the name of God because God's name is I. There's a verse that says, if, he know, if we know that he hears us and all that we ask of him, then we know we already have the things that we've asked of him. Now, God is our imagination. So when we imagine something, it is God seeing it instantly. So if we know that he hears us and all that we ask, he knows that we, if we know that he sees all that we imagine, we already have it. So I hope this was helpful. Definitely download that worksheet in the description. Hit the like button so that people can see this video. Hit the subscribe button if you want more broken down systematic techniques, especially about Neville Goddard. If you want laser focused, systematic, broken down, um, testing, prove it to yourself, master manifesting videos, definitely hit that bell icon and I will see you next time.